Hi everybody, welcome to Wes Explains Best. This is a geometry review of section 6.8, applying coordinate geometry. We'll go ahead and get right into it. A lot of students consider this one of the hardest sections because we're dealing with variables instead of numbers in the coordinate plane. And it gets a little confusing, but I'm gonna teach you a few tricks to make it a little bit more simple. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. Here we have this triangle kind of floating off in space. Notice how it's not touching anything, and that's okay. It just, we need more uh, variables this way. So if we're labeling, for example, point P is labeled A, B, C is labeled, or Q is labeled C, D, and then R is labeled E, and then what we need to do is we need to figure out, can we figure out this variable? A lot of students, they say, oh, this is gonna be point F. Well, yeah, we could label that F, but something better, we already know that this y coordinate is the same as another one. This is a straight horizontal line, so it needs to match the y coordinate over here. So if this is b, then this is also gonna be b over here. Now, that's the whole goal. You wanna use as few as variables as possible. What's a way that you can reduce the number of variables you use? Well, you can reorient the triangle. You can always reorient a triangle so it is flat to the x-axis or the y-axis. So in this case, we made it flat to the x-axis axis. What does that do for you? Well, it makes it easier to figure out the y coordinates. So here we had the point zero, zero, and then here we had the coordinate. Okay. What's the y coordinate going to be here? It's going to match. It's also going to be zero. What does this do for us? Well, we have zero, zero. We have the point uh, R is C zero, and then we have the point AB. We still need two variables there, but our total amount of variables went to A, B, and C. That's three and this one, it was five. We needed A, B, C, D, and E. So it reduced the number of variables we needed, and that's a good thing, okay? Let's look at another way we can orient it. We can orient it so that we have it uh, against the y-axis for point Q. What does this do? Well, we still have our y-coordinate is zero here and zero here, okay? This time we use two. So we use negative two A, and I'm gonna talk about why you could potentially use uh, double the variables, what that does for you. Here we have Q, what's the X coordinate this time? We could say the X coordinate is zero because it is on the Y axis right here, okay? Uh, and then R we already said is two C comma zero. What does having the two next to all these variables do for us? What's the advantage of that? The advantage is it allows us to find midpoints. So you can always double variables and it makes it easier to find midpoints because you don't need to take the half of anything. Just as a reminder, the variable, um, the formula for midpoints is x1 plus x2 divided by two. And then for the y coordinate for a midpoint, it's y1 plus y2 divided by two. Therefore, if we wanted to label our points, we could call this x1, y1 for point M, okay? We would need to be given this, by the way, one, two, three, one, two, three. That shows that those are midpoints. And then we could label this x2, y2. With those labels, we could say, okay, negative 2a plus 0 over 2 is going to be our x coordinate for y. We get negative a. And then for, or did I say y? I meant x. Now we're on y. We can say 0 plus 2b over 2. And then we're going to get 2b over 2 or just b. So the advantage of using these twos, negative 2a, 2b, and 2c, is if we know we're gonna go in with the intention of finding midpoints, it makes it so our, it point, your, our midpoints are whole numbers. There's no fractions involved. Otherwise, it'd be negative a over two and then b over two, which isn't as ideal. Now we have n. We're gonna do the same thing, and here I'm just gonna mentally do 2c plus zero divided by two, and that's gonna give me c, and then 2b plus zero divided by two, and that's gonna give me b. And it makes sense that it's b because it's already in line with point m. It's a straight horizontal line, so it's got to be the same thing. Boom, boom, the B's match because the Y coordinates are the same. Let's move on to example one, okay? Um, example one is a great one of uh, a strategy that we can use if you're having trouble with this. So snow is a square, SN equals 2A. So we know that this side equals 2A, okay? SN equals 2A. Let me go ahead and label that. 
So that equals 2a. And then the axes bisect each side. So we're going to go ahead and show what that means, bisect each side. So these are the axes, by the way. These are the axes. I wish they used a different color. Let me just change colors real quick. So these are the axes, and they're going to bisect each side. And let me go ahead and change to green so you can show that a little bit better. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, each one of these sides is going to be the same length. Now, what does this do for us? We want to label the vertices. So we want to find out what this distance is right here for the x and y orientation for n, for s, for o, and for w. Okay, now at first glance, this seems pretty tough. But what if I told you Sn is not 2a, but instead it is 10? Okay. Well, this would make it a little bit easier because now we know what this distance is here. This uh, green distance, this bisected distance, is going to be 5. And this bisected distance is going to be the same thing because it's a square. So this is going to be 5. Therefore, this would be 5, 5. Okay. We went 5 this way, 5 up, and that's going to give us our n coordinate. Now, we already said we essentially, we let 2a equal 10, right? So a would be equal to 5. Now, how does this process work? Well, we could substitute anywhere we see a 5, we could replace it with a. So instead of writing 5, I'm going to write a. And that's going to be our coordinate for uh, the variable when it's 2a for the side sn. That's my strategy, that, uh, that's my tip, is you can always just let the, the variables equal a number and then think back into the problem when you replace it with the variable and see what it is, okay? So if we know this, we go a units over and then we go a units up to get to n, what happens if we go this direction? Well, we know we still go a units up, positive direction for, for y, but we went in negative direction for a this time, okay? And the negative axis over here, negative x-axis, positive y-axis, or sorry, positive x-axis, positive y-axis, negative y-axis. So we have negative a. Now we're on to w. w, we're going to go negative a direction again, but now we're going to go negative a direction for y. So negative a, negative a. Here we're going to go positive a direction for x, and then we're going to go negative a direction again for y. So this is going to be a comma negative a. So not too bad. Again, if you want to say, okay, I get it better with the fives. This would be negative five, negative five. This would be five, negative five. You can always replace the five at the end. Okay, uh, that might make it a little bit easier to understand. But just know that we're talking about distances, unknown distances but we can still figure it out in the coordinate plane by just using what we know of the coordinate plane. Here we have an isosceles triangle. GIF is isosceles. That means two sides are the same. GF is the base. GF equals 2A. Okay, so we know this is 2A. The y-axis is a median. Well, what does a median mean? A median means that it splits the other side, goes from a vertex and splits the other side into two equal parts, okay? Now, if let's say we want to say, oh, I don't get this part with uh, 2a, what if I would say gf equals 10 again? All right, let's, time, let's do something else. Let's say GF, gf equals eight units. So this whole thing is eight, okay? If this whole thing is eight, what would each one of these little segments be? Well, this would be four and four. Well, that might make it a little bit easier. I know this point right here, is four units away from the origin and it's on the x-axis so this would be four comma zero what about this one we go negative four units this way so that'd be negative four comma zero it's still on the x-axis so it'd be the y coordinate of zero they need to match but it's not eight we know that it's two a right so let's replace what we know okay let's say we know two a equals eight we let it equal eight let two a equal a 2a equals 8, so we can divide by 2, divide by 2, we know a equals 4. So anywhere we see a 4, we can replace it with a. So instead of positive 4, 0, it's going to be a comma 0. Instead of negative 4, 0, it's negative a 0. We went a direction this way, negative a direction this way, because the whole thing was 2a. Now what about this? What about letter i? Well, we know the x-coordinate, it's on the y-axis, so we know the x-coordinate is going to be 0. For this point, but what about the y coordinate? 
There's no way to know what the y coordinate is, so we know it's going to be an unknown. So instead of just writing a question mark, we're going to give it a variable, and we can just make this one up. We can call it b, and that's the easiest way to do that. So now that is example two, okay? Isosceles triangle. Last one we're going to do in this video, ABCD is a parallelogram, okay? So ABCD is a parallelogram. We have some information here. We know this is 0, 0. That's important, okay? That's good. And then we have the whole edge is on the x-axis. So we know these need to match, and they do, okay? So we have 0, 0 uh, for the y coordinate. Now we have this distance right here is 2a. So this distance right here is 2a, Okay. Now, if it is a parallelogram, then we know this distance right here is also 2a. Okay. All right. That's our start. Whoops. Sorry for scrolling up. Now, look at point B. We only need to find out the, the point for point B, the coordinates for point B. The easiest part is probably the y coordinate because the y coordinate is going to be in line with this whole thing. And if this whole line, it, horizontal line, is already in line with this, then we know this y coordinate needs to stay the same. So we know this is going to be 2c, okay? Because it's in line with this 2c right here, okay? Another way, like, okay, I don't know what this the c is all about. How do I figure that out? Well, um, we can just say, okay, I want 2c to be equal to 10, and we can say, this is 10, so if this is this y coordinate is 10, then this y coordinate is also going to be 10 because it's in line with it, if you don't like the variables, okay? I'm going to concentrate on using the variables in this particular um, example, though, okay? So stay with me here. All right, let me erase this. Now, the hard part is the x coordinate because the x coordinate is composed of this distance here. Let me uh, use a different color. This distance here plus that two-way. Okay, so this distance here plus this 2a is going to give me my x-coordinate right here, okay? So this is 2a. What's this pink distance right there? How do we figure out what that is? Well, we already know what that is. We know it's 2b. 2b is situated 2b units away from the origin, okay? So that is 2b. We already know that distance at the bottom is 2a, okay? And this distance right here is 2a. It matches it. So if we do 2a plus 2b, that is going to give us our new distance. I'm going to list it. Well, you can call it 2b plus 2a. That's fine. But technically, you should put it in alphabetical order, 2a plus 2b. But just so you can see that we're adding this distance here, okay, is 2b because that's the x-coordinate, okay? Imagine that this number was... Uh, if we had a coordinate plane here, okay, like this, and this point was 3, 5, and we're looking for this coordinate over here, okay? Well, first off, we know that the 5 would be the same for the y-axis, okay, because it's in the same y-coordinate, y-plane, but we would know that this distance right here is a distance of 3 units, because that's what the x-coordinate means. This is 3 units away from the y-axis. That's why it's 2b units away from the y-axis there. And then we already know, because it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal. So that's 2a units away. Okay, that, that's a distance of 2a. So we do 2b plus 2a to get all the way over here. And that's why our x-coordinate is 2b plus 2a or 2a plus 2b. Hope you guys found this enlightening and this was helpful. Thank you for joining me. There's going to be some multiple parts for other examples that are a little bit tougher than this. So make sure to stay tuned and watch those videos. Thank you for watching this one. Hope to see you next time.